2256, on the 5th of June 1944, six Horsa gliders towed by Halifax bombers took off from RAF Tarrant Rushton in Dorset and heralded the start of the Allied invasion of occupied Europe. Major John Howard led 181 men of D Company, 2nd Airborne Division, in a surprise attack to capture the strategically vital road bridges over the River Orne and the Cane Canal. And that gives us a beautiful introduction to probably one of the most famous and iconic bridges in the world. Welcome to Pegasus Bridge. With a plethora of World War II shooters both released and in early access, a title really needs to be able to stand out from its competitors in order to survive. So what makes Vanguard Normandy 1944 any different? Vanguard is a hardcore tactical multiplayer squad-based shooter. Lead your team to victory by suppressing the enemy and using squad-based tactics to win the firefights. With its real-world battlefields and painstakingly recreated weapons, equipment and uniforms all rendered in the stunning cry-engine, Vanguard Normandy challenges players to fight and secure historic World War II objectives during the most ferocious and intense battles of modern history, aka D-Day. There are no vehicles in this title and it's not something that the devs want to introduce. Infantry is the core backbone and a real grounding in authentic environments and weapons. The game currently only has three maps with variants for time of day and weather with some of the best rain I have seen in a shooter period. We currently have Pegasus Bridge, Merville Battery and Leon Samur, which are all recreated beautifully and authentically. The game is bare bones at this stage with only one game mode which is called Raid which is a squad v squad with short battles and one life scenarios with the NCOs able to reinforce the front line at a tactical time of their choosing. Weapons and classes are also very limited to four, but with this comes a very acceptable and healthy cost as the title is less than £10 on Steam. Graphics and audio are not groundbreaking, but underneath the hood there is the opportunity for tactics and team play if, like many other titles, you have a good squad leader and all the members use mics and want to play the way the game is designed. One aspect that this game really nails is the night times. The night time is dark and moody and you see silhouettes running across the horizon or running through the trenches. There really is that opportunity here, unfortunately, to TK. There are no team markers or enemy markers or anything of that such. So this really is the hardcore aspect to this game that you're either going to love or hate. Personally, I think it's fantastic and this is what I want out of other games such as Squad, Sandstorm and of course the iconic Hell Let Loose. So this aspect to this game is a plus, the nights are dark and moody as it would have been in real life. Playing as the British Paras and storming Pegasus Bridge is amazing and highly worth the entry fee alone. There are a lot of potential for this title but it does feel a little early out of the gate and a little bit bare bones. If you love World War II and authentic, historically created maps, then this is definitely a little title you should keep your eye on. In the rest of this video, I'm going to be walking around and having a look at Pegasus Bridge, maybe giving you a little bit of history, but also giving you the chance to have a look at some of the footage. There's not going to be any multiplayer footage on this, I will be leaving that for another video, but in the meantime, thanks for watching. It is an honour to step foot and remember those who fought and died here. And in June, I hope many of you will respect D-Day and maybe give a minute silence and just think about the way the world's gone, the left-wing liberal 
politically correct garbage and the snowflakes out there that are ruining this world. God help us if there's another war. I respect all the fallen. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that bell, and I shall see you in another video coming real soon. Bye-bye. Six horse gliders landed at Pegasus Bridge, and the force was composed of D Company, reinforced with two platoons of B Company, 2nd Battalion, Oxford, and the Bucks Light Infantry. 20 sappers of the Royal Engineers of 249 Field Company Airborne, and men of the Glider Pilot Regiment. The object of this action was to prevent German armour from crossing the bridges and attacking the eastern flank of the landings at Sword Beach. Five of the Ox and Bucks gliders landed as close as 47 yards from their objective at 16 minutes past midnight. The attackers poured out of their battered gliders, completely surprising the German defenders, and took the bridges within 10 minutes. They lost two men in the process. Lieutenant Den Brotheridge and Lance Corporal Field Grenard. Grenard drowned in a nearby pond when his glider landed, and Lieutenant Brotheridge was mortally wounded crossing the bridge in the first minute of the assault and became the first member of the invading Allied armies to die as a result of enemy fire on D Day. The Airspeed AS-51 Horsa was a British troop-carrying glider used during the Second World War. It was developed and manufactured by Airspeed Limited along various subcontractors. The type was named after Horsa, the legendary 5th century conqueror of Southern Britain. Having been greatly impressed by the effective use of airborne operations by Nazi Germany during the early stages of the Second World War, such as during the Battle of France, the Allied powers sought to establish capable counterpart forces of their own. The British War Office determined that the role of gliders would be an essential component of such airborne forces, proceeded to examine available options. An evaluation of the General Aircraft Hotspur found it to lack the necessary size, thus specifications was issued. It was from this specification that Airspeed Limited designed the Horsa, a large glider capable of accommodating up to 30 fully equipped paratroopers, which was designed as the AS-51. 